If you want to get more traffic from Pinterest and make money online, then watch this video all the way till the end. If you're using Pinterest or you're thinking about starting to use it for your business, then you probably already know that Pinterest isn't just a very popular social media platform, it's also a very popular search engine, and it's known for its unusually high buyer intent because of the way it combines the features of a social media platform, a pin board, and a search engine. Hi, I'm Alex, digital and affiliate marketer with Lover Fighter Writer, and in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to do Pinterest keyword research for free without a keyword tool. This video is going to focus on how to use Pinterest itself to find topics that are relevant to your brand so that your pins and your content strategy can reflect what people are actually looking for on the platform. If that sounds good to you, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave me a comment if you've got a question or you just want to say hi, and let's get into the tutorial. All right, as promised, this Pinterest keyword research tutorial is going to focus on using free tools, primarily Pinterest itself, as well as a Pinterest ad account to figure out which types of keywords we can target with our content in different niches. And so, of course, using Pinterest itself is free. And for the parts where we're using Pinterest's ad manager, you may need to set up an ad account in order to do this, but I don't think you actually have to add a payment method and you absolutely don't have to pay for any ads in order to use the keyword research tool that's built into Pinterest's ad manager. You can do the same type of thing with Google's ad platform and Bing and Quora and I'm sure many others. So don't worry about setting up an ad account or having to pay for anything. Everything that I'm going to show in this tutorial is available for free. And if you're just getting started on Pinterest, then this is going to give you a really good idea of how to find the right topics and the right keywords to include in your content. As you can see, we are on my Pinterest account. This is called the Business Hub. So this is kind of the back end look at my account. And Pinterest has actually been pretty good for me. I believe it's the social media platform that my website receives the most traffic from. And that's despite the fact that in the past, I've never really focused on Pinterest. I've just sort of shared my content there the same way that I shared on all social media platforms. But I was still able to get over 10,000 impressions a month and usually a dozen or more clicks to my website. And that's just from sharing one of the hundred or so posts on my blog on Pinterest five days a week. So as you can see over here in the analytics overview, this is significantly more than I was usually getting. I think I was typically getting more like 12,000 views a month, but then I ran about $10 worth of ads recently. And side note, if you are looking to do paid ads, Pinterest is extremely inexpensive compared to Facebook or any other visual ad network that I've ever looked at. Over here on the right, you can kind of get an idea of that, where with some of these ads, I was getting thousands of impressions per dollar. And even with the ones where the impressions were a bit more expensive, I had a very good click-through rate and I didn't spend that much. I think the total I spent in the past week was under $10 and it more than doubled my traffic, got me an extra like 10,000 impressions and a bunch of website traffic. And here in the middle, you can see my recent pins. And these are all pins that I've posted over the past couple of days because I'm working on pinning more because there's a lot of evidence that shows that when you publish anywhere from 10 to 30 pins a day, you start to get significantly more traffic and more exposure in the algorithm as well as search engine rankings on Pinterest. And so I think I posted all four of these over the past 24 hours. And this one's already got 12 impressions and two clicks. This is one of the ones that I ran as an ad, but you can see over here, uh, only 140 of the impressions and five of the pin clicks came from the ad. The rest were organic. This one's entirely organic. This one was organic, it didn't get any clicks yet. And uh, these two were ads, but this one was not. So already you can see that I'm getting much better organic reach on Pinterest than I likely would on any other social media platform. And I'm getting a much higher click-through rate than I would be likely to see on any other social media platform. Because unlike most social media platforms, people don't come to Pinterest just to hang out and be entertained. They typically come to Pinterest to do research, to get ideas, and effectively to decide what to buy. So it is a really good option for both organic and paid marketing. And we're going to start with just using Pinterest itself. You can use the search over here from your dashboard, but my favorite way to do this is to open a private window. So I'm using the Brave browser, but whether you're on Brave or Chrome or Firefox or something else, they pretty much always have the ability to open what's called a private browser window or an incognito mode browser because you're not going to be signed in on the private window, which means the search engines won't be affected by your past searches or by anything that the platform knows that you tend to search about. 
Now we're on Pinterest in a private or incognito browser window, and you can check out the Today, Watch, and Explore pages, which all feature a different version of what's popular and what's trending on Pinterest. And so depending on what type of business you have, what you're selling or promoting, paying attention to Pinterest trends might be very relevant for you because there's new trends on Pinterest every day. And when a new trend pops up, it might spike a bunch of traffic really quickly, and then it might also go away fairly quickly. So being aware of the trends and when something's relevant to you, posting about it can be very helpful. Now, for me personally, my business is digital marketing. So most of the topics that I cover are fairly evergreen and they're not likely to trend. But the good news there is that they are likely to have fairly regular predictable search volume. So keyword research can be especially valuable there. Now, since it's almost October and we've got these Halloween type trends popping up here, I'm going to cover one example, which has nothing to do with my business, which will be an alternative candy brand. And then we will cover something that is relevant to my business so that you can see what more of a B2B application would be like. So let's imagine that we are running or working for a business that sells healthier alternatives to popular candy. With that in mind, you can see how Halloween might be a big time of year for this brand. And so we're going to be looking to capitalize on the Halloween and autumn trends in order to get more attention and promote our healthy alternative candy. So when I click on the search bar up here, it's going to recommend a number of popular things. You can see Thanksgiving and Halloween showing up right here. So I'm going to use those as inspiration and I'm just going to start typing Halloween candy. And so right away, we've got some pretty good ones. Halloween candy ideas. Idea posts are very big on Pinterest. Halloween candy bag ideas, which might be a good additional product for this imaginary brand to offer. Halloween candy bowl, Halloween candy apples, which might be something that we sell as a healthier alternative. And you can do this keyword research method on most search engines. It certainly works very well on Google and YouTube. And most people call it auto suggest keyword research or something like that because you're using the platform's auto suggest capability in order to see what other people are searching about right now. And so when you're doing this, one thing that you can always do to expand on a topic is add a suffix, which is a word that comes after, such as for in this case. So now we have Halloween candy for school, Halloween candy for kids, for toddlers, for trick-or-treaters, classmates, coworkers, party, teachers. So these are, every single one of these is what we would call a long tail keyword. And you could potentially create a, an entire pin focusing on that keyword. And the more of these you cover, the more likely it is that people are going to start seeing your content, both when they're browsing and when they're searching for this particular term. And so now I'll try a different suffix such as with, and that didn't quite turn up what I was expecting, but there certainly are some good things to think about here. And you don't just need to stick to adding suffixes, which are words afterwards. You can also add prefixes, which are words at the beginning. So for example, we could try something like sugar. We've got Halloween candy sugar cookies and Halloween candy sugar content. That would be an interesting piece of content for a healthier options candy brand because we could do like a pin that shows a bunch of popular types of candy along with how much sugar they have and then our brand compared. That would be the kind of thing that a lot of people would probably save and share. And I was, I was hoping it would say sugar free, but it looks like there's not a lot for that, but we could still make one for that topic. We could also try gluten, which is another common allergen that people want candy without. So we have gluten-free Halloween candy list. That could be a good one, a list of gluten-free Halloween candies. And then we also have dairy-free. You can also add common prefixes like best and how. This brings up some very interesting topics, how to store Halloween candy, how to make Halloween candy, how to leave candy out how to get a lot of Halloween candy. You could post a guide for kids who are trying to figure out how to maximize their haul. And so hopefully that makes sense. That's a, that's a pretty basic keyword research tactic, but a lot of people don't realize that you can do this on pretty much any search engine. Obviously it has to have the auto suggest capability, but most big platforms like Google, Bing, YouTube, Pinterest, even Facebook and Instagram search are going to auto suggest things. This can be a really good way to get ideas for your content, which in this case is your pins. And then if we were selling our healthier alternative candy online, then we could have links from the pins to different products. 
and some of them could be product pins, which have the price included with them. Others could just be normal content pins, which do not. And so there's a ton of different ways that in this example, a candy brand could use the popularity of Halloween on Pinterest in order to get a lot of extra traffic and potentially buyers. And before we switch over to the keyword tool inside the ad manager, let's take a look at something that is related to my business. So one of the articles that I've been working on lately that's already on my blog has to do with MRR products. So I'll just put that in. And MRR stands for master resale rights or master resale rights. It's a popular type of digital content that you can buy for fairly cheap and then resell at a higher price, usually with some sort of an enhancement like creating a bundle of products or making it part of something else that you're already selling. And so in this case, it's a much more niche topic and it's a much more complex idea than candy. And so I'm gonna have to do things a little bit differently. So first I just put in MRR products and you can see I've got MRR products to sell, digital products with MRR, free MRR products. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna expand the initial word to master resell. And so we've got master resell rights, master resell rights course, master resell rights products, ideas, roadmap, content, quotes. So already some ideas there of what kinds of content I could do to promote my master resale rights content or to promote my articles about them. And I'm just gonna go back here and change this to resale. It looks like that doesn't have as much. Let's go back to this one and we'll say course, okay, products, digital products with master resale rights. We could also try eBooks or books. All right, looks like I'm running out of suggestions here, but we could also start with digital products and then say resell. So digital products to resell, resellable digital products, how to resell digital products. And then we can try the same thing as we did with the last example, such as adding a suffix, digital products for kids. That's a very popular niche of master resale rights products like kids stories, coloring books, other kind of activities for kids. We've also got for moms, for beginners, for sale, for teachers, for students, for Etsy. Etsy is a huge market for, for digital products like this. So I don't wanna dwell on that too much longer. Hopefully that makes sense. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below and remember to like and subscribe while you're at it. And now let's move over into Pinterest's ad manager and I'll show you what you can do with its keyword selector tool. So from my logged in dashboard here, I'm back on my main browser. I'm gonna to go to the menu on the left and then create a campaign. You might need to set up an ad account, possibly even add a payment method, but you don't actually need to buy any ads in order to do this. You can just get into the campaign tool and then not publish them. And so I need to go to manual campaign and say, get started. And then you don't actually need to fill out anything in here. You can if you want, but for the purposes of using the keyword tool, we just need to go over here on the left. And so this is the campaign right here, and this is the ad group. And so I'm just gonna click on the ad group to go there. And then in order to access the keyword tool, I just need to select a targeting strategy. So you can just go for choose your own if you don't want any presets. I usually use find new customers because that's what I've been looking to do with my ads. And then scroll down a little bit more and here you'll see interests and keywords. And so I'm gonna expand this. And then over here we have add interests and I'm gonna to go to add keywords. So that was a whole lot to get to this tool, but now we're here. And unfortunately this is not super detailed. So you can't get keyword data on every single keyword, especially long tail keywords that you might want to know how many people are searching for but you can see generally how much interest there is by focusing on kind of the root topics or the core topics that your longer tail keywords are related to. And so let's start with the Halloween candy idea again. So first I'll just type in candy, candy recipes, candy cake, candy bars, uh, candy desserts, lots of idea based things. And now I will add Halloween at the beginning. And the one thing to keep in mind is that Halloween is obviously a very seasonal thing. And so that means that these search volumes don't represent how often people are doing these searches right now, like end of September and into October. This would be more of a representation of how often people search this on average across the entire year. So like in January and February, when pretty much no one is thinking about Halloween, there's not gonna be a lot of searches and that's gonna factor into these averages. But we can get some ideas from this. So I'll just add all these results. And it wants me to put a budget in in order to see the estimations. So I think I am gonna do that. I'll just come back here 
And then one little tip is that if you're if you do put in a payment method and you're worried that it might start without you meaning for it to, then just put this to paused so that way even if you publish the campaign it won't spend anything. And then I like to do a daily budget and I'll just put in $1, which is mostly what I've been doing. And so now when I come back to the ad group and I go to my keyword ideas, it's showing me that I already have an estimated audience size of 10 million or more just for this. And it's saying that I could probably get 10 to 26 clicks a week if I continue spending a dollar a day, which is very, very inexpensive. And quick note, this is all ages, but it's also currently set to just in Canada. So I think I'm going to change that to United States quickly and we'll go with English. We'll assume that we're only going to be selling in English and we'll change this to US only. And now when we come back up here, you can see we actually have a audience of 85 million plus because Canada is a much less populated country than the United States. We have a much larger audience pool. And as we add more keywords, this is just going to get bigger. So let's see if we can find anything a little bit more generic about candy. Try healthy candy. So we've got healthy sweet snacks. That's a pretty good one. Also try sugar free. Yeah, we've got a few good ones for this, sugar-free candy recipes, sugar-free dessert. And I think there were some good ones back on just sugar-free as well, Yeah, because these would technically be relevant as well. And then let's try gluten-free. Yeah, we've got gluten-free candy, gluten-free candies, gluten-free dessert. So this would be a really good audience if I was going to run ads for this imaginary brand, because we'd be targeting a massive number of people in the United States but we would be unlikely to be showing our ads to anyone who isn't interested in one of these things. And now let's take a look quickly at the other example, which is the master resale rights products. And so I've already looked into this one a little bit and there is not a lot, but as I mentioned, you just kind of have to go to the root. So if I say master resale, that doesn't get me anything. Master resale doesn't get me anything. If I put in MRR, that shows up, but I'm not sure if that means what I want it to mean there. And so I can try MRR products, but no. MRR digital products, no. So I'm gonna have to go back to the original term and say master resale. Even that doesn't get me anything. So I'm gonna have to reduce that down to a more basic term, which is going to be resell. And now I've got some stuff I can work with, right? So we've got resellers products, resellable products, resell products, a bunch of good ones for me here. We can also say resale. That doesn't get me anything. Let's try resell digital. Nope. And try digital products. All right. And so I'm having trouble finding a lot of terms for this one, but it's already a very large audience. So that's not really a huge deal. And what I might need to do is find a adjacent term or another term with the same meaning. So for example, MRR products are sometimes often referred to or confused with PLR products. PLR stands for private label rights. MRR stands for master resale rights. They are similar. The main difference is that you can rebrand PLR and use it in a wider variety of ways than you can with MRR. But for the purposes of targeting the right audience, the same type of people are likely to be interested in them. So I'm going to try that put in PLR. And so we've got PLR products, PLR product. And maybe if I fill out this a bit more, no, okay. I'm not sure why it's saying that I can try, here we go. PLR digital products. And then I can also try the root word. So I'll put in private label and we've got a number of these. And for this audience, I would probably want to restrict this more. So I would come down to my demographics again, and I would definitely say uh, 21 plus and probably knock this one off because people who are over retirement age are less likely to be looking for this stuff. But I'll leave that there. Um, I'll leave this on US and English. And so now this audience is down to about 50 to 80 million, which is actually really ideal. And so I'm probably going to use this audience to run my next round of ads. And this is like a perfect broad audience targeting audience to do my initial ads with. And then I can build retargeting audiences based on the people who interact with those pins and who actually click through to my website.
So that was my Pinterest keyword research tutorial using only free tools. In fact, we only used the tools that are built right into Pinterest itself. And so hopefully you saw how easy it is to use Pinterest's own search tool in order to get ideas for content. You can also look at the people that are ranking for those search terms and see what else they're posting and get ideas from that. And we also looked at how to use the ad manager's keyword selection tool in order to not only find some of the most popular keywords to focus on, but also to get a rough estimate of what kind of an audience we're working with. And it doesn't matter if you're running ads or if you're just posting organic content, this is still a pretty good representation of the kind of audience that I can potentially get for these types of topics. So I know that there's lots of people on Pinterest that are interested in what I'm promoting, and I know what types of keywords to use in my content. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. Leave a comment if you have a question or if you just want to say hi. I'll be back soon with more marketing and writing tutorials, including more stuff about Pinterest and probably Pinterest ads as well. And I hope to talk to you again soon.